we are very fortunate in the sense that we are central. We are sort of in the middle between Franschhoek, Stellenbosch and Paul. And there are people who visit us and we are very thankful because local tourism has definitely picked up. And there's not a weekend where we are not fully packed to the brim in our restaurant, um, which is really, really good. And hopefully from the 1st of October, we'll be opening the restaurant again for the first time since last year, March, seven days a week. So in the Winelands, you can see art. You can do a full experience with art, food and wine. Um, our farm is very much situated around creating experiences where people can enjoy all of those all of those things together. For Glen Carlo specifically we've always been very much aware of art um, because of the previous owners Donald Hess who had a, his permanent collection displayed here it was a museum where you could see artworks and then when he sold the farm in 2016 to a pactolus of South African investors we basically went on with the tradition of art because our owners are very passionate about art, contemporary art specifically, and also promoting young talent. And when I say young talent, I mean emerging artists. So emerging artists from all walks of life, ages, wherever. Um, our main aim is to bring art to the people and I think to also bridge that gap, that formal space that an art gallery sometimes has where it seems inaccessible to anybody who might not understand art. And we want to invite people to come to our space, to come and ask the questions, to come and see the work that might challenge you. And it doesn't mean if you don't have an art education that you can't ask questions about art. Art is ultimately for people and it's made by people. It has very real um, thoughts emotions, feelings that are all attached to all of us. We all feel these things. I mean, if I talk about Aldo Brinkat's exhibition, although his exhibition is very personal and private, all the things and feelings that he addresses are universal. The way we mourn, the way we memorialize our loved ones, the things that we love, the things that happen to us, um, all of these things are relevant. And I think it's, it's something that I really want to get people excited about. Yes, it's encrypted. All of it is encrypted. And um, uh, there's quite a few different levels of encryptions. You're absolutely right. So number one is, say, for example, the, rail, the raised uh, little uh, no nodules, which is uh, sort of a braille formation. And uh, the braille formation that you can read with your fingers uh, is, tells, a, tells quite a sad um, sort of a tale of trauma and, and pain and suffering um, and that's, that's hidden behind glass so you can't actually run your fingers over it so whether you're a sight seeing person or uh, somebody who's, who, has, uh, who has no sight it, it remains a mystery to you because uh, somebody who can read braille can't touch it and somebody who doesn't understand braille can't read it um, and then I'll superimpose upon that is um, uh, fingerprints uh, uh, also in a braille formation um, in, that have been dipped in gold. And I use this finger of, that I use to unlock my phone, all the information about who I am, all my passwords, my bank accounts, etc., my photographs, my family photographs. They're all kind of stored and released uh, through this kind of fingerprint. And they, in this particular artwork, tell a, form a, tell a story of great bliss and joy and peace. And um, so the one, uh, the, both stories put together are the kind of like the sum total. They're both, um, of, of all of us really, we all are walking vaults of good, beautiful, joyful experiences and really sad, depressing uh, uh, experiences in our uh, personal lives. And in this particular case, um, the stories remain a secret. They remain with me um, because I don't actually want you as the viewer to judge those stories, either um, to bring the joyful stories down or to try and placate me out of the suffering of the, the more sad stories. So sometimes we have, have these experiences in our lives and we dare not even tell even those very, very close to us what happened, good or bad, because by sharing them, they immediately run the risk of being trivialized. So here they are, sort of like 
for us all, um, our good experiences and our bad experiences. So there's something quite intriguing about having that secret, that you don't know, if you own this piece, and there's something uh, a little bit, it's intriguing, um, and it's enticing because it's in the same way as having that theatre cut into stone and right. ultra, where you know that there is some great stories being yes. told hundreds of years ago, yes. and yet we'll never know, but yes. we know that there's something profound yes. in that rock, right? Perfect. And uh, like if you go to those uh, amphitheatres in Greece and so on, you, like you correctly said, you cannot, um, you cannot imagine, or you can imagine, but you will never know what was performed and presented there and how it was responded. But nowadays, those facilities are available to us to perform our new stories upon them. And so, in a way, it's the same thing. I hope that an audience could look at this and and not try and work out what happened to me, good or bad, but rather to bring their good or bad stories and hang them on some kind of braille formation or grid formation like this. The the, the braille is quite pivotal to the whole concept. To the whole exhibition, yes. Um, well, in my discovery or in my working with uh, monuments, uh, mostly uh, what I would call lesser monuments, these are monuments across the country that have been uh, neglected, vandalized, looted, forgotten for whatever reason. Um, so they have maybe their plaques have been ripped out and stolen and melted down for, uh, at a, to make more money, or the stonework has been prized out. Either way, um, uh, we have we we can't um, read these monuments, these lesser monuments, and sometimes we miss the point as well. And that is that the stone itself is also part of the monument and to be read, not just the plaque. So the the idea came when I, I try to run my fingers over a a, a monument in in um, in Mowbray that had most of its uh, writing had been polished away from repeated. Um, uh, rubbings, and um, and I ran my fingers over the mo- over the the plaque and onto the rock, and I felt both the plaque and the rock have stories to tell, and uh, that got me onto uh, sort of writing these cryptic st- uh, st- messages uh, as if a, a plaque um, on, on a monument. It's a nice conversational place. You can come in. You can ask questions. Uh, you can learn about art. We occasionally offer art uh, programs where we do a little bit of a walkabout or a casual training course in painting or freeing up your creative energy. Um, so it's always worthwhile to keep a lookout what's happening on social media, on our website. Mm-hmm.